Before I jump into the message today, if you're a guest with us, I want to say thank you for joining us today. Um, today is a little different day than a normal day. I'm going to be sharing some family things that have been going on in our church financially, what we're doing. Legacy is a massive part of our church because legacy allows us to do above and beyond what comes through the house here on a regular basis. If you're a tither at this place and you're a faithful tither um, and um, you understand that, you live that, you believe that, you, 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 that's just who you are, I want to say thank you for your faithfulness and your continuing tithing and believing God is your source and allowing God to be your source. And so a legacy is above and beyond that. So the stuff I'm about to share with you in a moment is separate from the tithe. And so I just want to say thank you to everyone. Why don't we stand just for a moment? Just for a moment, just for a moment. Why don't we stand and why don't we tell thank you to about seven people, seven people, maybe eight, um, for giving to Legacy in 2023. Come on, give them high fives. Come on, send me like, come on, high fives. High. Come on, by faith, by faith. Everyone that gave to Legacy, come on, some of you um, I won't get out of your row a little bit. I might have to walk down there and give you a high five. Come on, let's give a couple people, eight people high fives. Thank you for giving to Legacy in 2023. You brought in a record-breaking number. Let me tell you, the year of 2023, stay standing with me, stay standing for me. The year of 2023, we had 86 people decide to pledge and give to Legacy. Come on, 86 families, single moms. Couples, young adults, Gen Z, 86 of you decided to give above and beyond your tithe to what we were going to do for 2003 when it came to legacy. The reason why that's such a massive number, because in 2023, 46, of pe 46 people gave to legacy. So in 2023, we doubled as people pledged above and beyond their tithe when it came to God's house. Come on, can we just let God know that we are thankful for what he is doing in our lives, what he's provided, what he's opening up in our lives. And you brought in, I love this, I love this, I love this. Who, who's like really, who's like a hype person? Like you can get a little hype a little bit. All right. Pastor Joe, they said you. Come on. Here you go, Pastor Joe. I want you to read this number because I don't think they understand above and beyond. You, you, can, you can read. Did you say you can't read? All right. You're, you've been educating our state for 40 plus years. I know you can read. Here you go. Read that number that's on the screen. All right, church. I want you to catch this number. Amount given to legacy, $196,876.24. Come on. Ah. Uh. That is what came in above and beyond the tithe in 2023. So when restaurants are up 28 to 30% on their sales and food and everything else's rates are highest, we had our record-breaking number as people given above and beyond to Hope You See in 2023. Come on, can you just give yourself a round of applause? So good, so faithful. I'm believing, we had, we just, we just, Got the number at 86 givers. I'm, I'm believing for 150 to 200 people decide to pledge and give to Legacy above and beyond their tithe and offering. I'm just really believing that for the year because this church keeps going to new levels every single year. And so I'm really thankful that you guys believe in what God is doing here. Part of our legacy for 2022, you can take a seat right now. Part of our legacy for 2022, we, we, we casted vision around this time last year that um, the building next to us was coming up for sale. And we, we, we communicated and we said that the building next to us will be a stepping stone for us to get to our 25.46 acres. If you do not know, we own 25 acres on I-25. And, and we said that we were going to purchase this building. There's a couple options we could go about doing it. We could turn it into a one-go facility, which I believe New Mexico is starving for a training facility on all sports for northern New Mexico. Um, we, we, we talked about that. We also talked about keeping the leases in there and, 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 and using the profits from the leases to continue to move the ministry forward. Come on, because God has called the local church to be owners, not renters. Come on. And so we pursued that. You showed up to the, the batter's box, 
And every single one of you gave an above and beyond. So thank you for that. But then when it came down to the, the to certain numbers and interest and what the bank was asking to, to finalize some things, because uh, when it comes to buying things, things change by week and depending on the market and everything. Our our church board and our and our advisors um, highly suggested that that was not a very good financial decision for us to move forward on the things that the bank was asking us to do at the end of that. And so with, with the advice that they gave us and, and just looking at the whole numbers and everything, um, that we, we, we decided to move on from that. But because of your continuing giving to Legacy, we were able to pay down, uh, continuing and as we continue to pay down the mortgage of the land. Come on. We were able to pay attorney fees. We were able to pay bank fees. Uh, th there were fees from the bank, even though we decided not, we didn't decide to purchase. There was still a receipt that we had to pay them and do certain things. Uh, insurance fees, tax fees, and everything. And then we were able to do other things outside the church that we continued to move forward as a church. Because um, when we were blessed with the land, the land was not put in our operation budget. So when we said yes to the land and God birthed that miracle, it is by faith that we continue to pay on it. It is by faith that we continue to pay it off. But what God did, God did something amazing. You want to hear some good news? There's some good news. How many guys need some good news today? And so right now, as we stand right now, we've been in this facility for six years. And our five-year lease just it, it ends this month. It ends this month. And so um, I, I, I got the new lease in, and right away, I know December is a month of negotiating for me. And so right away, I begin to read over the lease and everything that's been coming before us for, for, for the next five years being in this space. And, and, and um, it, it, I added up all the numbers, and it came out, if we say yes to the lease here for the next five years, we would give the owner about a million dollars. No one's cheered for that, right? And so right away, I was like, God, you got to do something, God, because we are called to be owners, not renters. And this place has been a blessing to us, and it may, be, it may continue to be a blessing to us. And so right away, um, some other properties have, have come up. A school has come up that we're, we're pursuing because um, we believe that we are going to lead the front uh, when it comes to education and Hope Unlimited Academy. And so um, we just really believe that God is breathing on some things. So in about two weeks, a matter of a week and a half of time, multiple things have come up to where we could be in the position in 2024 as owners, not just 25 acres, but other acres and other buildings as owners when it comes to Hope Limited Church. And that is, a, that is a God miracle for a church that's seven years old in a city that's known very expensive. And so God is setting us up. Because of your faithfulness, because of you investing and believing and, the, and leaving a legacy, but also setting up a legacy for this, for this church and people to come, we are in the position right now because of you. And so I had a meeting with the bank on Friday to tell them about some of the things. And I just told the bank, I said, I need a miracle, and you need to make the miracle happen. And they said, well, sir, it doesn't work that way. I said, no, it does work that way. And I said, I need you to talk to who you need to talk to. We need a miracle. And he says, well... Let me look at some things. We're on the phone, about a 30-minute phone call. He says, hey, did, did you, what, would, what did your land come back as an appraisal when you guys were pursuing the building? I said, uh, you know what? You guys never sent that to me because we decided to not to move forward with the building. Um, we didn't, I didn't ask for any of that, even though we paid for some of that. He said, well, let me look it up. And he couldn't find it for like 15, 20 minutes. And then our conversation was almost over on Friday. He said, look, I found it. And he's like, do you, know, do you realize how much your land came back on? I was like, no, just I, I would love to know. Our land appraisal came back, I found out Friday morning, $4.4 million. We owe $450,000.11. You need to stand and thank God for the miracle that he's laying on the lap of this church and what he's doing in this church. And so I said, well, there's your answer, bank. Do a miracle. And so the bank is really moving forward with some things for us. And hopefully next week and I can share more on the direction we may go. Because I had a meeting with the owner of this property on Saturday morning. I was kind of nervous about the meeting because you never know how someone's going to react. And I've been in, the owner of this property has been amazing to us, such a blessing to us. Amazing uh, man. He's born and raised Santa Fe. He's 73 years old. 
but he's just phenomenal, generous, local Santa Fe, uh, and uh, he's just amazing to us. And we're going to talk and talk, and I was really nervous how he's going to react. And, 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 and for the first time in six years, he says, well, and, and you know, we're going to keep seeking God and what God's going to do. He said, well, would you, I understand why you wouldn't want to rent from me because he's a businessman. I wouldn't want to give someone a million dollars that I don't own either. I'd rather pay him my own mortgage. He said, would you want to just buy, would you want to buy this whole property? And he, I said, you've never wanted to do that because it's an inheritance. He wants to hand it over to his grandchildren and, and everything. And um, I said, well, I don't know about that, but because I told him what we're pursuing in other areas. And I said, um, let's just continue to talk. So regardless of what takes place as a church, whether we're here or somewhere else or where we're moving, God is setting us up financially with estates and property and land so that we get to our future home on 25 acres. Because what God, is, what God has given Pastor Rachel and I, let me tell you, no eye has seen, no ear has heard of what God is going to breathe on in those 25 acres. And so we're in a very good place. Aren't you thankful? In a place where everyone is freaking out and, and businesses are closing, we just had our best year, and we have our biggest opportunities right now as a church. Come on. Can we just let God know that we are thankful for what he is doing in this church? So as we continue to move forward, paying on our land, paying everything that takes place on that land, um, we continue to be strategic about what God is asking us to do. Um, we continue to be blessed and, and, and wowed by God. Um, and, and, and it's just a miracle when the bank was like, you guys paid 700000 for that land and you owe 450011 cents? How did that happen? I said, God. God. And so it's going to be a good year. Everyone tell someone it's going to be a good year. Come on, God is setting us up. And the way God sets this church up, he's setting your home up too. So believe that, receive that today. How many want to be set up by God in 2024? Come on. I believe it. Well, I'm about to drop a word with you that I believe that is going to set us forward to everything God is doing right now in this church behind the scene. Because my friend, heaven's been talking behind this church's back. Heaven's been setting things up that I had no idea was taking place. In the last two to three, two and a half weeks, week and a half, things have just been popping up left and right. But you know what's crazy about it? Is our bank account and our size of the church does not match these opportunities. That's when you know it's God. That's when you know God just breathes on something. Come on, because we live by faith. One of our core values here at Hope You See is we are faith responders. We are faith responders. We are faith responders. Come on. We respond with faith. And we are a living testimony. You are a living testimony of living by faith. This church is a living testimony to think that Pastor Rachel and I came here on a 27-foot U-Haul with no money, no people, no nothing. And to think in seven years, God has blessed you and I and brought us together. God has partnered us together. God is breathing on things. And to think that he's about to set us up on certain things. To think that this church, you and I own 25.4 acres. And God wants to give us more land, more buildings in seven years. And a place that is known for the most expensive area. And God is breathing on what you and I are declaring and stepping out and doing. Can you believe that? It's an amazing thing. Can I share with you the next couple of moments I have with you on how we're going to take on 2024? Yeah. You guys okay with that? Yeah. All right, can you just stand one more time for me? Some of you need to, let's stretch. Let's stretch our spirit and our hearts right now. Come on, let's stretch. Come on, go like this. Just stretch a little bit. Come on, stretch. Come on, some of you got to get ready to, 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 for God to speak to you today and catch some revelation. John chapter 15 verse 5 says, yes. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Come on, we're about to do something in 2024. Father, we thank you for this word. God, we can't see it. We can't touch it. We don't know how it's going to happen. But God, you're staring at a church that is full of faith. And has seen you move in the last seven years. And God, we are expecting for miracles to be birthed in 2024. 
But God, we're not going to focus on those miracles. We're going to focus on something a little different. So we just thank you for this word. We thank you that this word does exactly what it's supposed to do. I pray for the hearts that are trying to close right now. You open them right now. I pray for the minds that may get distracted. I pray for that distraction to go. I pray that, God, they hear you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you take a seat? And just turn to someone you love a lot and tell them, apart from me, you can't do nothing. You can do nothing. Come on, some of you are like, I love to see if the wives do it first or the husbands. You never know. And the single people are like, man, let me do it by faith right now. I'm about this. This is that, 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 all you single guys, I just gave you a 2023 pickup line. Girl, apart from me, you can't do nothing. And th- I think in 2003, it was stuff right there. I have no room to give advice on pickup lines. I've been in a relationship for 22 plus years. I have no idea what that would be like. I actually feel sorry for you people that have to date in 2023. So that's a whole nother day. Let's just keep focused right here. Come on. Hey, in 2024, these are the things we're going to go after very strategically. This is where legacy finances are going to be able to breathe on in 2024. You ready for this? The number one thing is families. Family. Everyone say families. Whether you're in a family, whether you're believing for a family, whether you're starting a family, whatever category of your life, we're going to go after families. Some may say today, right now, well, Pastor Larry, we do that every Sunday. We gather, we we grow, we worship, we, we, we step into things, we do. But the operations of the church allow us to do that. That's the tie. Legacy is going to allow us to do even more things. Legacy is going to allow us to breathe on and to step out and bring more resources to you and open up the space wherever we are at so that we can reach more people. And the reason why these first, these next two things, Kids Unlimited team, which is your children, my children, are ready for an upgrade. Indoor playgrounds, technology, more resources, more things. It's time for our children's ministry to get an upgrade. Because they haven't had an upgrade since the life of the church. It is time for the legacy finances to go into Gen Z. And then the youth ministry on Wednesday night. You're going to hear more about what we're going to do. And I can't wait. There's one thing I'm super excited about it because I went through it as a kid and it's going to change your kid's life. And I'll let the team tell you later. But the next thing is Gen Z. Every Wednesday night, do you know this? About 50 plus high school students, junior high students show up here. They're worshiping. They're going after God. They're leading their peers in worship. They're praying over each other. The the, the word is being brought forth. They're finding their gifts and talents. They're discovering things. They're getting hungry for God. And later on at the end of my message, you're going to hear a phenomenal story of a young girl going to summer camp and her life being changed because of your legacy in 2022. Gen Z's on fire. Gen Z's going to outrun some of the adults. I'm sorry. Gen Z is, is they're, they're, they're brave, they're bold. Sometimes they're too big for their own britches, but they're okay. They'll pull them back up. This generation is more braver and has an entrepreneur spirit than ever before. This, 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 this Gen Z, let me tell you, so I show up here sometimes on Wednesday nights, and, and sometimes they make me feel super awkward, like, what am I doing here? And, um, and they look at me like I'm, like, super old and I can't be in this room. And they make me feel very awkward and uncomfortable in my own space. And um, so I just kind of hide on a wall. And, and sometimes I think they just laugh the way I'm dressed or whatever I'm doing. Because I don't really care about Adidas, Nike, Reebok all together. I know some of you people have got to have socks match your outfit. I'm past that. Whatever's clean, I put on. Come on. I got two kids. Come on. My barber's here. He always laughs at me with the socks I have on, the pants I have on. He's, he's still young. We're praying for him. Uh, and uh, I love coming into a ministry, and this is what I love about our Gen Z. Our Gen Z has been operating with very nickels and dimes, very minimal, very minimal. And I love to see a ministry grow without a budget and money. The reason why is because they get creative and they step out in God. And now when I walk in, I'm like, oh, now you need some money. 
because now we're going to reach more students. They have a goal of 150 students in here on a Wednesday night, and they're almost halfway there. And l- let me tell you, and, and it's and, and it's and it's this is this is the magnitude of, of what's happening in this church because it's not about comparison. It's not about oh we're bigger, we're better. It's not about that. But let me just state some facts for you. This youth ministry is on our map right now and in, in, in a path right now to be bigger than some churches in Santa Fe. The, 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 that's what God's breathing on here. And it's not about, oh, we're bigger or better, but I just want to give you a scope of like 50 plus students and, and, and young adults leading them and leading in worship and, and transitions and stagehands and they have their own area set up. They're going after God. Come on, are you guys excited about Gen Z? <laughs> Women ministry, man ministry, and it's going to continue to go to the expansion of our land. It's always going to continue to go to that. And then education. We really believe we are going to, it's going to happen by faith that in 2024, the fall of 2024, come on, can you pardon your faith with me? Because I need it. I need your faith. Then we're going to launch Hope Limit Academy in 2024 in the fall. And so uh, it's going to be really good. But how are we going to do that? By this one statement that God gave Pastor Rachel and I. This is how we're going to do it. You guys ready? Families who remain will produce. We really believe that God has asked us, given us a mandate to go after families in 2024 like we've never gone after them before. I may show up at your house knocking on your door one evening, and you may have a ring camera on there, and I may dismantle it because I have one of my own. We really believe families who remain will produce. People that stay married produce. People that stay in love produce. People that stay in relation with their children produce. Because can we just be like just really just irritated with this one thing in our society and culture today? Aren't you tired of coming across 30 and 40-year-olds and 50-year-olds and 6-year-olds grown men that are broken from their father or home relationship? So we're going to equip you, man. Man, 2024 is going to be your year. You may say, well, I don't have any kids yet. I'm still single. Okay, start now. Because you'll attract who you are at the current state of right now. Don't wait to become something to get something. Become something now so you attract what you become. So, and, and women, come on. You are more than a housewife. You, you, you are more than just someone that has to come across like you're strong, you're independent, you can take care of yourself, you, you, can, you can provide for yourself. You can because you are so gifted and talented, women. But you are called by God. To have this spirit in you of such love and compassion to where God has birthed and, and breathed a, a male that is designed to be in your life, to be your helper. You're called to be each other's helper. And so we're going to go after the women because society has tried to change your identity. This independent. Nothing wrong with that. But do it with a helper. Yeah, we're going to have a fun year, don't you think? It's going to be amazing. But I have to get you to understand your identity, and God's going to breathe on it because I'm just going to deliver the word that God gave me. And I really believe when you and I understand our identity, things begin to shift in 2024. So there are two very important parts of the scripture I just read you. I wrote this whole message off that one verse. And the first thing is, I am the vine. I am the vine. The phrase, listen to this, I am the vine, reflects from Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, where God introduced himself to Moses with this expression, I am who I am. This statement became a way to connect with God personally, and this statement was actually used all through the history of Israel's life. So Israel understood who I am. I am who I am because they believe this, and we need to capture a hold. We need to grab this today. God always was, always is, and always will be. Say this to me. Say, God always was. God always is. God always will be. You can't change that. You cannot change that. You can ignore it, 
You can disrespect it. You can dishonor it. You could not take advantage of it. You can have your own view of what you, you think and you think God is, but you cannot change who God is. God always will be, God always is your source. He always will be. Whether you tap into him as your source is your own free will. And if you and I are going to remain in what God has called us to remain in, and our homes are going to remain and produce what God has asked us to produce, we must understand our role as a husband, a mother, and a child of God. We, we must. Things must shift when it comes to you and I understanding our responsibility and who we are and our identity. Because Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, it says, God replies to Moses, I am who I am, it says. This to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. And I believe more than ever right now in 2023 around this holiday season that God sent Pastor Rachel and I to this region and this city not to play church, not to have recess, not to give you goosebumps, not to, not, not to, not, not to make you feel good, but grow you. And, and I believe that what God is asking us to do when it comes to your family, my family, I can learn from your family. I, there's, there's experiences you've been through that I can learn. I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old that my two-year-old now tells me I'm not his best friend anymore because he can't do certain things. I got a lot to grow. I got a lot to learn. I got a lot to figure it out. I say all I have to say that is that we're not going to play Around, not that we played around before, but it's time for Hope Unlimited Church in Santa Fe to go up another level when it comes to who God is. You guys ready? Because we have to understand what the word vine actually means. And the most clearest cr way I can tell you today, the main meaning of it, it just means connection, friendship, strength, determination. We have to believe today in 2023 and as we get ready to step into 2024, that the vine, which is God, always was your source. The vine always is your source. And the vine will always be your source. You can't change that. That's why it's so important you remain. You remain in your family. You remain in your relationship. You remain in whatever God has you in. Because God wants you to bear fruit in whatever you are in right now. Number two, identity that needs to take place. And this is where it comes between you and I. Turn to your neighbor tell him he's talking about me. Turn to another person and say he's talking about you. Second one is you are the branch. So we have to understand what the vine exists for. The vine exists to nourish and feed and grow the branches. The branches are you and I. Do you know what we exist for? If we're connected to the vine, which is God, he's our source, he's our provider, Yahweh, El Shaddai, best friend, listener, door opener, door closer, healer, miracle worker, way maker, restorer, whoever he is to you, when it comes to the vine, we understand that. But do you know why you exist if you are the branch and you are connected to the vine, which is God, your only responsibility, my only responsibility, is just to bear fruit. That's it. Well, if it's that easy, why well, I'm not seeing that in my life. Okay? If you're not seeing the fruit that you believe you're supposed to have when it comes to God, there's a good indication that you've separated from the vine. So if you're not happy with the fruit that you are producing in your life, get reconnected to the vine. Come on. The problem is, is that we re and we're not happy with the fruit. I'm only happy with my marriage for 20 plus years, and I am still in, madly in love with my wife 20 years later, not because our marriage is perfect, because I stay connected to the vine. 
And Pastor Rachel is still in love with me after 20 plus years. Because, you know, my shape has changed a little bit when we first met. Because she's connected to the vine. I have the patience for my two-year-old son and my four-year-old daughter because I stay connected to the vine. I have enough grace and love to be in my household and remain in my family because I'm staying connected to the vine. If we are not happy with what's going on around us, it could be that we've disconnected ourselves from the vine. But the good news is that in 2023, 24, if you just get reconnected and you understand your responsibility as a child of God is just to bear fruit, imagine what kind of year you'll have in 2024. Anyone liking what, what's going on today? Come on, church, you there? So the biggest thing is how we're going to remain and what God's asking us to do and the family God's placed in our lives is just know that we're not the vine, we're the branch. We're not the vine, we are the branch. And the next step that I believe that we're going to see manifest and come alive in 2024 in this church is this one. Those who remain in me. I believe and I declare by faith that I'm going to see more people that are part of Hope You See remain in God in 2024 than we've ever seen before. Because everything when it comes to legacy, everything we do when it comes to legacy, when it comes to your family, we're going to fuel and grow and create environments for families to remain. Someone's marriage is going to get restored in 2024. Because of legacy. Someone's child's education is going to get saved. Because of legacy in 2024. Something's going to shift in 2024 in this church. And when I was going over my notes again last night and going through this message, God hit me on this, this moment in my message. And my message was done. I already sent it out to the staff and the team. And then something just hit. And I begin to have this visual in my head. And then God began to show me a lot of homes in our region, in our area, in northern New Mexico. And when I saw these homes and I began to visualize and I continue to pray, I saw a bunch of sandcastles. I said, God, what are you saying? And I felt in my spirit is, he said, don't settle for your church and your people and the families in your church to continue living in sandcastles. Sandcastles get washed away. Sandcastles look pretty on the outside, make you dream. Every sand, it's, it's a sandcastle. Every girl's fantasy is for a prince to come on a white horse and take him away in their castle. At least that's my four-year-old daughter's. Fantasy dream. And I said, he said, don't settle for them. Don't let them continue to live in a sandcastle. And so I looked up some sandcastles. And I was talking with the staff and everything and going over some stuff this morning. And I said, hey, do you guys have my sandcastles ready? They said, what sandcastles? I said, the ones I emailed you guys. They said, no, there's no sandcastles. I said, no, those are sandcastles. He's like, no, you sent us a bull, a horse, and a puppy. I said, that shows, that's my point. It looks so real that you thought, you believed it was real. And it was fake. It was sand. Check this picture out. First picture. Fake. That's sand. That's a fake bull that's built out of sand. That looks real. Looks real, huh? Some of you be afraid and think that thing's going to chase you. That's not moving. Honestly, the bottle of water you're probably carrying walking down the beach, you can just go like this. Gone. Next picture. Looks real, right? Looks good. Looks amazing. I thought about doing this for my daughter because she asked for a horse every year. Next picture. Looks real. Little bulldog. 
little puppy. I think I'm going to do this too this Christmas because I promised my daughter a puppy after she scored a lot of goals this past year. Looks real. Looks good. Oh, it's cute. Makes your heart feel a little good. Oh. Someone's living homes like that. And even, even my home needs adjustment. Even my home needs improvement. Even my home is still being, my home has not arrived. Someone that tells you they have arrived, they are lying through their teeth. Because that would be God has done. You should stop breathing and go to heaven. Some of us have been convinced the more money we make, the more things we buy, the more bigger homes we do build, the more homes we live in, the more things we get to do, it looks good. It's a sandcastle. Unless it's built on God's word. Unless it's built on God's foundation. Unless it's connected to the vine. I looked up another house. It was in Hawaii. You guys can go to it. You guys remember this fire? You guys remember this moment? It's interesting about this house. Somehow I'm going to get creative with this marketing thing. Because I believe that this is going to be your home, my home in 2024. I don't know what's to come. I'm not trying to put fear in you. But whatever does come, let's be ready for it. You know, this home was the only home that when the fires hit Hawaii, this was the only home that remained. Oh, they must have, like, put crosses all over the place. They must have left their Spotify playlist with worship music on. The Bible must have been open. They must have been in church while they were gone. Those are all religious acts. This couple was actually... In Massachusetts, where they're from, on vacation. They weren't even home. This couple wakes up the next day, found out what's going on in Hawaii, the fires. I know you guys are following it too. And they said, surely our house is gone. It's done. There's no way. They've been to see the news, and the news is highlighting. There's helicopters flying around everywhere. And they knew it was their house because of the red roof. Do you know the year before that? They were the only people in that region that decided to remodel. Could you be the only family in your family that decides to remodel for 2024? And your place now becomes a shelter and a safe place where people are drawn to because what you're building and what you're connected to. Do you know the reason why that house did not burn down? Because they switched the roof from shingles to metal. You know why I didn't catch fire? Because every time debris and flames would come, it couldn't spark a fire on the roof because it was metal. What if every time enemy tried to come at you, he couldn't spark a flame? couldn't do what he's trying to do because of what you're connected to. Because you decided to stay and remain and bear fruit. What if everything you did began to change simply just remodeling, restructuring your home? Regardless of what happens next to you in our city, around us, it doesn't matter. What if you're the house that has the red roof that stays standing? Well, that's not fair. Favor is not fair. And obedience is no respecter of people. It just responds to obedience. Why don't you stand with me? Worship team, you guys come up. So I really believe in 2024, everything we do, there's a long list too. Every single above and beyond legacy amount you give is going to go to us putting red roofs on every home. In 
You're going to hear more in detail. It's my job just to cast a vision. It's the staff's job to really lay out every single thing. And you're going to hear a video in about two minutes because of your legacy, because of you giving above and beyond and other things taking place and the, the, the church that we have and everything we get to do, uh, someone's home is getting a new roof because of the you. And you're going to hear the story in a minute. And I really believe whatever happens in our world when it comes to education, I believe our school is going to have a red roof. I believe our land is built with a red roof. I believe, I believe the opportunities that God has birthed that he already had before is that are on this church's plate right now that, you know, we're going to walk through the next couple of weeks. I believe those things have red roofs. I believe whatever comes and tries to attach itself to, to destroy or knock down or discourage or block what God's doing in this church is not going to be able to ignite itself because of the adjustments and the remodels that this church is making. At the end of the day, my wife and I moved here for families. It will always be families. It will always be. It will never change. And I pray my kids catch that heart. I pray your kids catch that heart. At the end of the day, we didn't move here for us or anything but families. And the crazy thing is, is the longer I'm here, the more I learn about families. I mean, this place was jam-packed like Sunday, and you all brought so much food. I had people on standby to go to Walmart or Albertsons because I didn't think you were going to bring food. I'm like, it took me seven years to figure out you love to bring food. Shame on me. When God asks you to give, it's because he wants you to bear more fruit. So today, through this next couple of weeks, as you pray and decide what you're going to give to legacy above and beyond. And some of you may become a tither for the very first time. Some of you are doing so good by yourself. But fires and a storm hits. This may open up your eyes a little bit. Like, I know how to be successful by myself. It gets me to a certain point. I know how to bear fruit with God. I'd rather bear fruit than try to be successful by myself. I love you, church. Pastor Rachel and I, we're going to pray ourselves up and our staff, we're getting ourselves ready for 2024. Because I really just want to see families begin to ignite and birth and begin to fan your own flame in your home and not just get your flame flammed, fl fanned in the church. I want you to start stirring your home up, stirring your room up. The, the, the other day, it was yesterday, actually, last night. I got home from the church. It was, it was bedtime. And, um, and uh, Pastor Rachel's been battling migraine all week, bad headaches all week. And the other night I said, Can, you're going to have to get through this. Figure it out. Like, just a headache. And um, I have more compassion than that. I just don't take Advil or aspirin and stuff. I just, I tell her, drink more water. And so I was like, you just got to push through this. Come on. You, we don't have time for headaches right now. And so as I'm talking, Adeline stops. She puts her hand on her mom, seconds. Jesus, please heal mommy's headache right now. In Jesus' name, please heal her. She stopped and kept watching Mickey Mouse Club, whatever she's watching. I was like, why didn't I do that? I just told Pastor Rachel, push through it. Here's this little girl, four years old, is responding the way a family should respond when it comes to a need. A headache small, but if she knows how to respond to small things, she'll know how to respond to big things. And so I want you to take a look at this video because it's a young girl deciding to respond. 